everyone. Welcome to the channel. Cindy Daychuk here with Queen Bee Creations. Um, today we are going to be working on some rolling pins. Now, I love getting the wooden rolling pins and I pick these up from auction sites. I pick them up from thrift stores because I love them in decor. So often I will just simply paint the ends of them and stick them into a big crock or just the one lying out on the sideboard or even I have seen them on towel racks hanging staggered upon a kitchen wall. So I think that as much as you may not need more rolling pins for a functional item in your kitchen, don't overlook them as decor items. And certainly if you are looking at reselling, doing decorative um, rolling pins can be a really cute and fun way to be able to boost your sales quite easily. So we're going to do three different treatments and three different looks and potentially if you're selling three different price points. So this one you can see has a very shiny sealed finish on it. So we are going to take advantage of that and we are simply going to add some transfers. Now, what I have got are a mix of different transfer flowers from different transfer packs. So ones that I haven't used on pieces of furniture, I just have little pieces and tidbits. And that's really, you know, what you need for a project like this anyway. If you were doing decor pots, you don't need to have big pieces um, and certainly not, not a brand new transfer. It's use up what you've got from other projects. So I am just going to kind of slice off, roll this on, and I'm just gonna start rubbing that transfer on. Once that transfer is on, I will be looking at sealing it. But this becomes a decor only piece then, right? You're not going to now be rolling your pastry out with the transfer on it. Um, it probably wouldn't withstand that and it's not gonna withstand, uh, you know, heavy washing in your, in your kitchen or anything. I mean, you can clean it as a decor item with just a damp cloth, would be fine. We will seal over it, as I said. But all I'm looking at doing is kind of rubbing that on and getting it to just kind of transfer on. Because these transfers really like to go onto a sealed piece. And so knowing that I wanted to put a transfer on at least one of these rolling pins. The reason I selected this one is because it already had that glossy finish. It saved me a step. There we go. Now, I like to take the, the white paper backing and just burnish my transfer on just to make sure that it has adhered super easy on something like a rolling pin. Now one thing to bear in mind with any of these transfers as well is that you can you can layer them over top of each other so don't worry if your design kind of goes around layers on top. So this one I think I'm going to and wrap that flower around from here. It meets almost right ac across, overlaps a little bit on the one that I've got, and I think that will be okay. And then take a look at what other little gaps that I have. I think I have this one kind of gap in here, and I have this little piece of greenery that I might fit in. So look how quick that was. Well, look how pretty that is. So imagine that just as a decor piece, rolling pin number one. Decorated, finished, 
great little cute decor item. Number two. We are gonna take this one. Now, I've already, I've already got the handles painted, so whatever color of your choice. Um, but what I am going to use are some of the chrysanthemum, the brand new stamps. Oy. So, the brand new chrysanthemum stamps from IOD. And what I'm looking at doing here is taking some of the stamps and I'm just gonna use black ink. So take my ink pad, just take some of the, the black IOD ink and I just wanna re-ink my pad to make sure that it's got enough ink in it. Close my container. And I'm just going to ink the top of my design. Now, because my rolling pin rolls, the easiest way for me to be able to get an impression is just simply roll my rolling pin over top. So, I got a good impression. I'm just missing a little bit down here on the bottom. It didn't look like that stamped. So, here's the tricky part. Redoing this means I need to get it right on where it was before, otherwise I'm gonna get shadowing. So try not to have to do this part. But not bad. Okay, so that's one. And this wood piece has not been sealed, so it is um, just kind of rough wood. Let me just look where I'm going here. And that worked great. So I've got two big flowers on there, and now, look at putting a couple of leaves. And maybe this leaf. See what fits. Alright, that one fits. because I have a very specific spot to fit it in. I'm going to try and fit this one on this way. So curve it over top, pressing very carefully. Good, okay. Okay, I'm thinking the two flowers and the one leaf. Is, is enough of a pattern on this. Now you could leave this like this. Um, so leave it as it is. And that would definitely be nice enough. But I'm going to add just a touch of color. Now what I do have here are Tombow professional dual brush markers. So it means that one side of the marker is kind of almost like a paintbrush tip. Can you guys see that? And the other tip is very tiny, very, very straight. What I'm looking at doing is just adding a little hint of color. So I'm not looking at doing it all. And you could certainly take paint of your choice and do this with paint, but these are pretty permanent markers and I am going to seal over top of them. So 
so I'm not having to um, worry. These are going to sink right into this wood because it's very dry and not sealed very well. And I'm not coloring the whole thing in. Let me show you what I'm doing. So can you see that I'm leaving some of the natural wood? I just want a hint of that showing. And what I will likely do is take a bit of a secondary color to be able to accent it in some places. So I'll have a little bit of the stronger color coming through just in places. Super detailed, but we end up with a look like that on our rolling pin. So it looks pretty cool and I didn't really have to do too much of anything, right? I'm using the design itself and then just crisping up some of those edges. So it's still, because it soaks into the wood, has kind of this soft kind of look. I'm going to carry on, do the other uh, flower and leaf. I'm gonna let them dry overnight just to make sure that they really soak into the wood. And then I'm gonna lightly sand it tomorrow before I seal it for our third little rolling pin. And I saved the smaller one for this one. And again, it's not sealed, it's just a rough, um, unfinished rolling pin. We are gonna be using molds. So I've picked a floral mold since I seem to be on a floral theme. Um, this is He Loves Me, but they're kind of a nice size for this rolling pin. I had looked at using some of the brand new sunflower molds, but they are too large for the size of my rolling pin. And for this, I'm going to be taking the IOD air dry clay and this is an IOD mold. You can get any of these products on queenbeecreationshome.com. And I am going to be pushing the clay into the mold. Let's get this filling up. These have a great micro rim, so a nice raised rim along the top edge that allows you to kind of get a nice crisp, crisp looking edge that if you roll your finger against it, it just kind of cuts off your clay right away. And take away any of the excess, so you don't need anything extra. So again, this is gonna give us a raised relief finish on our rolling pin that we will then be painting and finishing off, but I need to get my designs on first. So when you go to release this, if you're dealing with really delicate molds and some of them are really, really detailed, um, so brush them with cornstarch first, it helps with the release. This one, I had thought, I likely didn't need it because it's so big. Um, and I forgot to bring the cornstarch over. So I'm just kind of teasing it out. Always for any of them, you're gonna to wanna to, um, turn it upside down to be able to get it out. And there we go. So what I am doing is I'm gonna be taking my flowers and I'm going to be adhering Hearing them onto my rolling pin. To do that, I'm going to be using Tight Bond 3. It's a wood glue. It really um, it dries really fast and really firm. So I find that I don't have to kind of watch the glue as closely. So I just want to make sure that I get it out to all of the edges and you can use some little tool for this, you know, a little paintbrush to get it all spread out. Credit card, whatever, popsicle stick or finger. I just use a finger and wipe it out. And I want this one fairly close to the top 
and I'm just going to bend it around. And you just want to make sure that you get the glue right out to the edges so that the edges all stay down, stay stuck down as they dry, right? You don't want them curling up. Now, one of the things that you can do is as you get those, and I'm just wiping the glue off on my pants, um, once you get this done and you have your other molds around, then you can take some um, painter's tape and you can kind of tape it down just to be able to hold its shape as it's drying. But the tight bond does a pretty good job pretty quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a bunch more molds and I just have this kind of drying so that it's a little bit upright. Once I start getting the designs all the way around, I am going to put it into kind of a, a cup and let it dry standing up. And so that's one of the reasons too, if you use um, a weaker glue or too much glue, they'll tend to slide. So you can just kind of put some of that painter's tape around to anchor it while you're doing that. I'm just setting it off to the side with that face up while I come up with some other, um, some other of these, these flowers. Some molds on here. Let's add a few more. I think we need a little leaf down in this area. And maybe another little flower coming up here. And another leaf coming across here. Another one here. Let me take a look. Let this dry. What I will do is while it's just starting to, to dry here, I just keep kind of going back and pushing down on the curves so that it's not gonna lift. And I will just lightly wrap a little bit of tape around it and let it sit on my desk upright overnight um, so that tomorrow it's nice and dry for us to be able to paint and wax it and do all that fun stuff. Now that our molded Floral rolling pin has had a chance to dry. I'm just gonna unwrap it so you see how I had attached the tape just to make sure that all those edges stayed down and didn't curl up as they were drying. There we go. We're now gonna paint it. I'm planning on white waxing it after the paint has dried to get into all of the details to showcase um, a lot of the details of the flowers and things. So to do that, I didn't wanna to go too pale with the color. So I am actually going to paint it in blue iris, which is a DIY color, lovely, rich blue color. And I'm going to try and get it down into all of those crevices all around the flower. And the idea here is I'm gonna paint it, get that color down into all of the details, and then when it's dry, we'll come back and we will do some white waxing with it. So, it's not any more difficult than this. I'm just using, you know, by the way, for this, I am just using a little chip brush because I just like the way that all those uneven, cheap little bristles get down into all of the details. And I'm wiggling it back and forth and I'm not worried about ruining a good brush, um, getting it down into all of those cracks or all of those pieces. So 
This doesn't require any special brushes or techniques. You can do this with virtually any brush to be able to get it down into all those, but you're just kind of wiggling it back and forth to be able to make that happen. The second rolling pin design, you'll recall that we stamped on the designs from the IOD, the Iron Orchid Designs Chrysanthemum stamp. And then we took paint markers and just roughly colored them in. And I did go back over it and use um, a little bit of the black paint marker to just kind of bold out a little bit of the black. So what I wanted to do next with this one was just lightly sand it. I just want to soften some of those colors a little bit. I left it to dry overnight so that the paint had an opportunity to really um, sink into and kind of stain that wood. But I just want to soften it, take off any of that excess. Perfect, that's great. So we have two out of the three ready to be sealed. No big magic to this. We are just going to be doing sealing. You can use a poly of your choice. You could seal these with a wax as well if you choose to. So I'm just looking to apply some of that big top over top, just nice and quick. Get some of that over my color and soften it out. And then we will apply the same to the big one. I just need to set this off to the side here. We will do the same to this bigger one. Now remember, this bigger one already had a slick surface. So I'm really, all I'm doing with this coat is just sealing those transfers right the wood itself on this one was already sealed and if you had a rolling pin that wasn't sealed you could just have sealed it first applied your transfers and then seal it again just to keep those transfers um, nice and smooth now that the paint has all dried on this one it's time for us to wax now you can, if, if you don't want tons of white wax on this, you can clear wax at first and then white wax over it so that you have a little bit more control. But because this is pretty dark, I am perfectly happy with a ton of white wax sticking to it still. So I'm just taking, again, a nice soft chip brush and I am just taking my white wax and I am kind of cutting covering the whole piece with it. And in particular, kind of getting it down into all of those edges, all of those grooves. If I have some spots that I missed with the paint, then this is perfect. Just dab the, dab the white wax in there and nobody will ever know. So look at the leaf. Look at that definition that we start to get with all of that wax sitting down in all those little detail areas. This is the fun part. This is where. And the nice thing about this is it makes your piece completely unique. You can do something similar. You could never do something exactly the same. Look at that detail. How cute. And just using the same idea and just varying the color of these pieces. So you can have quite a little assortment of all kinds of different colored decorative rolling pins with all kinds of different designs. Vast array of molds available with IOD. So you have quite the variety to be able to introduce. But how cute is that? So we will let this dry now. I've taken off as much wax as I would like, maybe a little at the end here. 
So I've taken off as much wax. What I want to do is let this dry overnight and then you can just leave it as is, which has a bit of a matte finish to it. Or if you want it a little bit glossier, you could then buff it. Either works, it's just a case of whichever one you prefer. So I am going to let this dry. I have the other two rolling pins with their top coats drying as well. When they're dry, I'll take a couple of pics so we can see them, but super cute little ideas. Just taking old um, wooden rolling pins that you can get at any thrift store. You're going to be able to see them week after week. So create a little bit of a collection, decorate them up in different ways. We did this three different ways. There are more ways than just that to do it. We didn't even just straight paint anything. So you could have really cute little decor items that uh, do up in a hurry. So whether you're selling these in a booth or you are decorating into your home, let me see in the comments some of your pics of some of the things that you do. See you next week. Cindy Daychuk, Queen Bee Creations. Check out the website, queenbeecreationshome.com for any of the paint and supplies that we used. And I look forward to seeing you on the channel next time. Take care.